the cable started as a result of uh, numerous chats in pubs um, about the particularly dire state of local media. How do you fund a media organisation without result resorting to just half of it being full of adverts, without half of it being full of uh, advertorial? How do you do articles that aren't just copy-pasting press releases and churning them out and churning them out? Um, and most importantly for us is how can you have some kind of presence in print? So they raised about £3,000 through a Kickstarter. A series of free uh, media training workshops were put on using the money um, raised from the Kickstarter. And then the people that came to those media workshops and were interested became like the first uh, members of the co-op. And then using the kind of momentum from that, people went on and uh, got some funding from Co-ops UK. And they used that money from the Co-ops UK and the money from those 50 members and what was left from the Kickstarter to put the first edition out two years ago. Giving out copies of our paper in the street has given us a really like pretty diverse uh, base of readers. We print 30,000 copies every quarter. Um, we also do online content in between the print editions. It is really expensive to print and the amount of money that we have coming in is, you know, we can't really afford to do it more than that and pay people um, for their time. Um, but so in our print, art, uh, print editions, we always have at least one piece which is uh, dual language. So in the latest edition, we've got a piece which is in English and in Arabic. In the last edition, I think we had a piece which was in uh, English and Bengali, and then in the edition before that, we had a piece which was in uh, English and Somali. And that's sort of really helped us build up an audience in you know, communities that might not otherwise, um, otherwise read us. I think the thing I'm most proud of is definitely, is definitely the investigations and the longer features. I think investigative journalism is something that has really, really suffered in the past 20 years. The latest edition of The Cable, which has just come out and is sitting on some of your uh, chairs, um, we've had a story in that about police surveillance, which is something um, that Alon, the guy who wrote the story, you know, broke, and that's been picked up in um, The Guardian, The Times, and for, by the BBC. <laughs> Bristol is only a city of 460,000 people, so it's not, you know, particularly massive, but there's stuff happening here which we think that reflects sort of more widely uh, in the UK. I think that we've got a real problem in the UK where media basically exists within within Westminster or inside the borders of the M25 essentially. If it doesn't happen you know inside then it's generally not really reported. So we're involved in this thing called the Journalism Startup Network which uh, has been started with another cooperatively owned media organisation called The Ferret, which is based in Scotland. So we've recently copied something that they do, which is a transparent monthly transparency report, um, which gets sent to all of our members, and they've recently copied something that we do, which is using an online platform to vote on decisions that the co-op uh, takes. And we also basically want to see versions of the cable across every single city in the UK, because we think that it really provides a leg up for people in communities to both be journalists and also hear about really important stuff that they're otherwise not hearing.